Okay, welcome back everybody. I'm going to remind you of the two basic rules to determine if a molecule is going to be polar or not uh, so that you remember in this second part of the Vesper Theory lecture. Number one, if all of the terminal atoms are identical and there are no lone pairs on the central atom, then the molecule is going to be nonpolar. However, if all the terminal atoms are not the same, or there are lone pairs on the central element, the molecule is going to be polar. Intermolecular forces are also known as what holds molecules to each other. They are what make solid and liquid molecular compounds possible. The weakest of the intermolecular forces are called van der Waals forces, and there are two kinds, dispersion forces and dipole interactions. Dipole interactions occur when polar molecules are attracted to each other. It is caused by the partial positive charge on one molecule being attracted to the partial negative charge on another. So this is kind of like magnetism, a north and a south pole. Opposites can attract, but not completely hooked together like they are in ionic solids. Electrons, if you remember, are not evenly distributed at every instant in time. This causes temporary partial charges, which is called a momentary dipole. It affects the electrons in the molecule next to it, causing an induced dipole to be created. The molecules are then temporarily attracted, and dispersion forces can depend only on the number of electrons in the molecule. Bigger molecules have more electrons. More electrons create stronger forces. For example, let's look at the halogens. Fluorine is a gas, bromine is a liquid, and iodine is a solid. Hydrogen bonds are the attractive force caused by hydrogen bonded to either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are extremely electronegative, so it's a very strong dipole. They are small, so the molecules can get really close together, and the hydrogen partially shares with the lone pair in the molecule next to it. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest of the intermolecular forces. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is probably the coolest demonstration of hydrogen bonding. Hopefully it will run. If not, then we will cut this short here, and I'll put a link to it on the Moodle page. So if I don't get this to run together, then have a great day, and make sure you watch the video because it's super cool. Here we go. Awesome. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you really enjoyed that demonstration. I thought it was really cool um, demonstrating how hydrogen bonds are really, really strong. Okay, well, if you have any questions, see me during office hours and I'll be happy to help you. Have a great day.